What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Celio's Network for the top 10 decks in the standard format for the week of June 20th. We are going into the North American International Championships this weekend, and it will be the very last event of the 2019 through 2022 season. Um, <laughs> so this is the last event before Worlds, the last official event. And uh, we just had Milwaukee Regionals this past weekend. I got top 64 with Arceus and Teleon. And uh, here on the left, we have my top 10 decks from last week. On the right, we have my ordering for them this week. And we'll talk about some lists. Uh, the lists from last week still mostly stand, but I have resources that are continuously being updated with new lists for you guys. And I'll leave the links for that in the description down below. So before we talk about my reasoning for the decks and how I'm looking at the metagame coming up to this weekend, shout out to all my sponsors, potownstore.com, the best place to get PTCGO codes, cardtroopergames.com, where you can pre-order uh, all of the newest Pokemon products when they are scheduled to come out, and they also have a stock of currently released products as well. Uh, you can use code CELIO for 5% off at both of those websites. Beast Coast Pokemon. Beast Coast is an esports org that I'm signed to, and we have a YouTube channel where we create a bunch of Pokemon content, Dragon Shield sleeves, and PokemonCard.io. Links for all of that, including coupon codes and affiliate links, are in the description down below. And remember to subscribe to this channel for daily Pokemon TCG content. Um, so I'm working really hard for NAIC, and so these are my, you know, honest thoughts on a format that I am working my butt off on because I need top 32 at NAIC to get an invite to Worlds this year. Um, so last week I had Mew VMAX as the number one deck. This week I have Palkia and Teleon as the number one deck. Um, I'm, I'm actually a little more afraid of Palkia and Teleon than I am of Mew VMAX going into this week. It was flipped last week. I thought there would be more Mew, and I thought Mew would be more successful, but there was actually more Palkia and Teleon, and uh, I think Palkia and Teleon is a bit of a scarier deck, especially because we don't know how lists are looking all around. A Mew VMAX deck, we kind of know what they can throw at us. Palkia, we, we're not sure if they're going to have Boss or Cross Switcher. Um, you know, if they're going to be playing that Canceling Cologne, if they're going to be playing Tool Jammer. Uh, if they're going to be playing Cheryl like Tord Reklev played this weekend. So there's a lot of variables with Pocky and Teleon. I think it's a deck that has a lot of potential and we probably haven't even seen its potential fully met yet. Also note that I separated Pocky and Teleon and Turbo Palkia this week on the list. Um, for Palkia and Teleon decks, I would go off of uh, Tord Reklev's top eight list from Milwaukee this past week. Uh, this is the list I would look at. Uh, if you're building Palkia and Teleon. Next, uh, number two last week was Palkia decks in general. This week, of course, I said I separated the Palkia decks, and uh, number two this week is Mew VMAX. Still a great deck, still a contender for the best deck in format. Um, not much else to say on Mew. Number three last week was Arceus and Teleon. Number three this week is still Arceus and Teleon. This deck was incredibly disrespected last week this was the deck i played justin Kulos went into top eight at 1004 with uh pretty much the same list i played we just had one card different um and plenty of other people michael pramo also placed well with it um so ai was like being completely disrespected people were saying it was a dead deck it couldn't beat palkia none of these are true it's still a great deck um i think it sits right under palkia and mew in power level uh just because it's not really an overpowered deck it doesn't have really oppressive power but um if it gets through its early game setup it can beat anything on this list um, if you have Arceus Energy and you can get your Charons, it can be anything on this list. Um, list for Arceus and Teleon would be my list. Um, I still think this is the best list. I'm probably... This This is still my top pick for NAIC this upcoming week. Uh, this was my 60 I played in Milwaukee. As of now, I'm not changing anything. Um, and that's from the Pokestats which I will, uh, I'll be leaving the Poker stats and Limitless links in the description. Uh, number four, Reggie Gigas. I'm keeping it in number four. It was the fourth most popular archetype this week, not including other. Um, 
I will also leave a link to the metagame breakdown, um, but I'm probably going to feature that in a different video tomorrow. So maybe I won't leave a link. We'll see. Um, but it, it's on Twitter, on Arcanine Labs Twitter. Um, so Regigigas is actually very good. It um, It's favored into Palky and Teleon and Mew VMAX. It's unfavored into Arceus and Teleon, which people didn't care about that much because, like I said, everybody said Arceus and Teleon was dead. Maybe less people will play Regigigas now that they saw Arceus and Teleon is a real and tier one top five deck. Uh, Regigigas, there's plenty of, maybe not plenty, but there are Regigigas lists. Um, Nick Moffitt, I don't think he shared his list yet because I maybe he wants to play it again at NAIC. Um, let's see if we have any of the Regigigases that shared their decks. Uh, yeah, here we have a top 32 Regigigas that shared their list on the Twitter. Um, just about every Regi list is now playing a third Regilecki being the one that can snipe 120 on the bench. Uh, so do keep that in mind. And most Regi decks are also splitting between Path to the Peak and Stormy Mountains. Uh, number five last week, I had Arceus, Jolteon, Vivid Voltage, Memory Capsule decks. Um, sometimes I just call this Mally Caps because it's usually with Malamar VMAX and Jolteon Memory Capsule. Um, I actually played against two of these at Milwaukee. Uh, I beat one of them and lost to the other. Um, and the one I lost to placed top 16. Um, I think it's a fine deck, but it loses to all the gimmick decks. It loses to Regigigas. It loses to Arceus Duraludon. Maybe not loses. It's unfavored. It, it's not, They're not your best matchups to Regigigas and Arceus Duraludon. And it loses to a single mill tank as well. Um, and then it's, uh, you know, it, it's best matchups. It wants to hit our Palky and Teleon, Arceus and Teleon. And Mew Max is like... 50 50 maybe slightly favored but it's hard to be more than slightly favored against mu v max regardless of what deck you are um so arceus jolteon vivid voltage i've moved down to number nine but this week the number five deck for me is arceus duraludon um i thought arceus duraludon was fine last week i had it at number 10 people said it wasn't a real deck here we are it won the whole stinking event this list i don't know how it won why would you ever put an Eldegoss V in this deck? I don't care that it w it was the winning play in the finals match. I don't understand how this Eldegoss V didn't get punished the entire tournament because the whole point of Duraludon is you just have two Duraludons on board. And this Eldegoss is a horrible Echoing Horn target. It's a horrible starter. So that really confused me. Other than that, like I think Arceus Duraludon is good. I just, I would not play that list. Um... Number six, oh, oh, but by the way, Arceus Duraludon, the reasons it's good is because it uh, just beats Regigigas and Blissey V pretty handedly. It's slightly favored into Palkia, and people didn't test the matchup because they assumed it was good for Palkia because Palkia only plays water energy. Um, it's good against Mew VMAX decks that aren't playing Echoing Horn. Um, it's unfavored to Arceus and Teleon, but it's not unwinnable. Uh, it has a pretty good matchup spread, pretty much what I said last week, except last week it just was getting no respect, and I kind of left it down in number 10 because I thought it lacked the popularity to get results, um, and it lacked the players, like the skilled pilots to get results, and I knew I wasn't going to play it, I didn't have enough faith in it to play it, but I knew it was a good deck. Um, number 6, Intellion Toolbox, did not do well this week, I moved it down to number 10 with the number 6 deck being Blissey Milk which was the number two deck. And you guys might remember, I was talking about how Shintaro Ito built Blissey Milk a few weeks back in an online event, only playing one Milk because everybody started countering Milk and focused more on the Blissey with the Team Yell Towels. And that's exactly what Connor Lavelle did here. And it worked out for him. Also played the Tornadus um, that as like a one-sided escape rope when you play it down, which is kind of cool. Um, and I'm sure it caught some people off guard in a closed deck list environment. Number seven last week was Blissey Milk. This week I have Turbo Palkia separated from Palkia and Teleon. Turbo Palkia is a good deck. I don't think it's one of the best decks, but I think it's a good deck. It is linear. It could be taken advantage of. Um, I played against two of them. I lost to one, and the one I lost to was playing the uh, small lightning package that you may or may not have seen on online events so far, but they were playing a Vicavolt V, a Raikou V, 
a toughness cape and a couple of lightning energies we can see if they've shared their list yet it was uh their first name was jose i know uh jose marzan so no they had they have not shared their list yet but if they do it'll be here on pokestats um turbo palky i think is good i it's not the deck i'm playing i'm i can 100 percent guarantee i am not playing turbo palkia it is not the deck that i think will get me the top 32 um the most safely uh last week we had frost moth box at number eight and frost moth box saw zero play in milwaukee um i still think it's a deck with potential but we saw absolutely nothing out of it uh which is why i took it off the list in favor of arceus flying pikachu which many top players played um i played against two i played against caleb getimer uh playing arceus flying pikachu with crobat vmax i also played against jose marrero playing it with decidui v star which was a little bit harder and we had a natural tie in our match i beat caleb getimer it's a very uh pretty simple matchup for Arceus and Teleon. Um, but I know Azul played it. I believe Danny Altavilla played it. It had some other placements in top 32, top 64, day two. Um, I don't like the deck. I think it's gimmicky, but it gets placements. Uh, that's for sure. And good players played it, believing it would get them placements. So it, there's a lot of merit to it. Um, so just because I don't like the deck, that doesn't mean you shouldn't play it. Every deck on this top 10 list last week and this week are certainly playable decks. I just have them ranked how uh, I have them ranked in the likelihood of them winning and top eighting and top 16 and top 32 ing and doing well at NAIC and in tournaments this week of the metagame. Um, then next at number nine, I had Ice Rider Calyrex. Uh, Frank Persick did top 16 with it or top 32 with it. Uh, Frank Persick got 30th with uh, his list featuring Palkia V-Star and Bibberol. It was much more of a Palkia Ice Rider deck than just an Ice Rider deck. Um, I think this list is pretty good. And if I were to play something like this, I would play Frank's list, maybe with a Celebrations Mew. I feel like that could be pretty good um especially since he's already running the air balloon but without scoop up nets maybe not it does have the cross switcher so uh celebrations mew was the thing i was considering most with this list though but he does play the pukamuku which is kind of like the replacement for it so um that is on pokestats as well if you need that list and um then my number nine this week is arceus jolteon vivid voltage i did take ice rider off the list this week i don't think it's good enough i think palkia is just always better um so arceus jolteon vivid voltage the mally cap stacks um they are they have more bad matchups around with reggie gigas and arceus duraludon and blissey milk getting second um so i don't think this is the week of arceus jolteon vivid voltage but i'm also saying that as a you know i'm like ai arceus and Teleon is probably the deck i'm playing so uh, I'm very far on the other side of the spectrum of Arceus decks. So if you like Arceus Memory Capsule and you think it's the play, then it's probably the play for you. Um, it is just not the play for me, and I don't expect it to be widely played, and I don't expect it to, you know, top eight the event. Um, and then last last week I had Arceus Duraludon. Like I said, it moved up this week. Inteleon Toolbox did not see that many performances this past week. We'll have to see how it does in NAIC. I still think it has potential though and those are my top 10 decks for the week like i said you can find lists for the decks here on limitless this will be updated more they only have the top eight right now but pokestats ptcgstats.com has more lists at the moment i'm sure all these lists will be added to limitless um you know the limitless team is also you know testing and prepping and traveling for naic so i'm not sure exactly when that will be up but these are my top 10 decks for this week of the pokemon tcg standard format with astral radiance as the newest set going into naic this weekend thank you all so much for watching have a great day and i'll see you next time here on celio's network